Very nice. So now you've made it to the fun stuff, rhythm. And rhythm's going to take a while, and you might not think it's fun by the end of it, but hey, I think it's fun, and you've made it this far, so why stop now? The goal of the EKG is to identify, identify and identify a cardiac arrhythmia. That is an abnormal rhythm. We are interested specifically in the electrical activity, the ups and downs, the refractoriness, and other electrical aspects we've talked about. Together, all in one bundle, we call this the electrophysiology of the heart. An arrhythmia is pretty simply a condition where the heart beats with an irregular or an abnormal rhythm. We are looking for any and all of them. It comes from Greek, where the prefix a means without, and the suffix rhythmos means rhythm. And like you surely understood in your EMT class when you were doing... And like you surely learned in your EMT class when you were practicing your diagnostic tools on your otherwise pretty healthy classmates, in order to understand what an issue is, let's first try to become aware and familiar with the normal electrophysiology of the heart. So here we go, we have the heart. And in the top right of the heart, the right atrium, right, we have the sinoatrial node. And the sinoatrial node helps initiate pacing. Well, it completely initiates pacing, unless that fails. It generates the regular sinus rhythm that we hope to see on the cardiac monitor each and every time. That being said, the normal heart rate that we hope to find is somewhere between 60 and 100. Really, the only exception to this is athletes, which in some cases are able to bring down their resting heart rate to well below 60, but apart from that, the majority of the patients that we find, including those that appear to be resting, if their heart rate is above 100, there's normally some other reason why their heart is exerting itself the way that it is. It starts by depolarizing the atria. So we'll make this one plain and simple. Look at the diagram I drew here. Yes, it's imperfect, but Look at the diagram I drew here and see that on the most basic level we have equal distance between identical waves. That is the only thing I'm trying to show here. Equal distance, identical waves. So you know what? Don't even look at the diagram here. Just remember this. On the most basic level, we are hoping for equal distance between identical waves. Now, let's add on to that. A consistent distance between the waves helps us appreciate a regular rhythm, which means a patient is likely not in atrial fibrillation. However, they could have that as a condition that just doesn't happen to be presenting right now. But we appreciate this because the sinoatrial node at this particular time is maintaining a constant cycle between pacing impulses. Sure, heart rate may increase a little bit or decrease a little bit, but not from one heartbeat to the next. It will be a slow ramp up. So use your best judgment in understanding what equal distance between identical waves is. And remember that all the automaticity foci that can take over after the sinoatrial node is no longer to conduct the way that it normally does. All of them have a regular rhythm. So, just finding a regular rhythm doesn't mean your search is over. All right, so now on to sinus arrhythmia. The sinoatrial node pacing is normal, but it varies with respiration. So now, on to the sinus arrhythmia. Well, it's kind of a joke, because what is the sinus arrhythmia? The sinus arrhythmia is the fact that the pacing of our sinoatrial node does vary a little bit with the way we breathe, with our respiration. This is a normal mechanism. And even though it sounds bad and it sounds like a uh, serious condition, this is effective in all humans at all times. The autonomic nervous system, oh yeah, that system that we know and love, causes a very, very small rate change. 
that may not even be noticeable based on the phase of respiration. This is not a real arrhythmia. It is normal. It is minimal. It may even be hard to detect on the printout. Just a very, very small decrease in the heart rate while the person is exhaling. And of course, on the other side, we have a slight increase in heart rate due to inspiration. So, a little bit up on the way in, and a little bit down on the way out. Up and in, down and out. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments.